Hi, my name is Jeremy Serkin, and I'm the owner of Executive Tree Care. But more importantly, for the purposes of this video series, I'm from Delco, born and raised. Throughout this series, we will showcase people from Delaware County. While tree work is hard work, it is nothing compared to what the individuals we're going to present do day in and day out. This is Delco Tough. My name is Andre Petrosky. I'm from Springfield, Delaware County. Um, my dad was a fighter. He ran a karate studio. He did some boxing. He wrestled at Penn State. So we grew up watching MMA, grew up wrestling, um, just came from a rural fighting family. So uh, during wrestling season, you know, since the time I was too young, um, I was always at wrestling practice. My dad had me in the stroller in the corner while he was coaching practice. Um, when I was four years old, I won my first wrestling tournament. As far as fighting goes, like we were always, my dad's a martial artist, so we were always watching, you know, the UFC, the first UFC events. Uh, we would watch boxing. Grew up watching Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. I love Delaware County. Delaware County's uh, where I grew up. All my family lives in Delaware County. It fostered uh, an environment that made me um, able to, to do the career that I have today and have the success that I have today. It had many great mentors for me. Great wrestling. Delaware County's got, um, it's a very blue collar town hard-working people. My mom worked at uh, Divine Providence, which is a, um, a village, a home for Down syndrome women. She worked there for about 15 years, and before that, she worked at uh, Don Guanella, which was another um, place where Down syndrome women would live. My mom um, dedicated her, really her entire life to working with Down syndrome women. Um, yeah, super proud of her. She's a tremendous woman. I owe a lot to my mother, for sure. I think that her, the way she valued the importance of working in the community and helping other people uh, definitely rubbed off on me. Always had um, a passion for fighting. I was always like, I would say a fan first. I would, I would watch fighting and be like, you know, I want to do that. I really want to fight. And um, my dad was like, focus on wrestling, focus on wrestling. When wrestling's over, you can fight. And, uh, you know, nationals were in March and I had two, two months left of school and I found an, uh, a jujitsu school um, up by Kutztown and I started training and I became like immediately like obsessed. And so then I did jujitsu for six months, just every day, twice a day. And, uh, and then I w wanted to take a fight. So I started going to an MMA school. And yeah, I think that it was always in the back of my head. Like I want to fight, I want to fight. Um, but at the time, my first 20 years of, um, I was just focused on wrestling. Uh, doing just jujitsu, I would do gi in the morning and then no gi at night at uh, a school called Berks County Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I stayed up there for six months. Uh, I graduated after the first two months from college. And then I stayed there for another four months until I had no money. So then I moved back to Delaware County and I found um, some guys that were training MMA. I went to world-class martial arts with Aaron Mars. And there was a kid there that had a fight coming up. And I, was, I asked him, I was like, you know, like, how do I get one of these fights? And he was like, hey, just message this guy, right? So I messaged this guy, I'm like, hey, funny you say, it was Jonathan Webb at the time. He was the matchmaker for CFFC. He's like, hey, I got you a fight, it's in 30 days, right? So I had relatively no striking background besides doing the karate with my dad. And so that was, at that point, I walked into an MMA gym, which was 302 BJJ in Wilmington. And I said, hey, like, I have a fight in 30 days. Um, like, would you guys get me ready? And they're like, what's your background? And I told them, like, I'd wrestled 
uh, three years Division One, two years of Division Two, and I have been ju doing jujitsu every day for the past six months. Like, don't worry about it. We got you. So my first fight was at the Borgata for CFFC. Um, I fought Jesse Stokes, and I submitted him in the first round. Uh, my manager called me. He was like, hey, I think you would be a great candidate for the Ultimate Fighter. I was like, awesome. Yeah, I grew up watching it. You know, I watched like at least half of the seasons of the Ultimate Fighter, so I was excited. I knew it was at my weight class. And so we fly out there. There's like, uh, they brought 11 guys at each weight. And um, the first week we were quarantined by ourselves in a hotel room, by ourselves. So after the first week, it was during COVID, after the first week, they pick eight of the 11. So it was like, they announced it on, um, there was a fight night that night. And we're, you know, we're in our rooms by ourselves watching the, uh, the UFC fights. And they announced the eight at each weight class. And so the three other guys, they fly them home, say, sorry, you didn't make it or whatever, after quarantining them for a week. And then we go right there from uh, the hotel room to the Ultimate Fighter house. And essentially, it's uh, eight guys in every weight, in both weight classes. It was 185 and 135. And they fight in a tournament over the span of six weeks. And they record it. You guys live in the house. There's this big mansion you live in. And they record you 24 hours a day. Um, while you guys are training and the coaches was my coach was Brian Ortega and the other coach was Alex Volkanovsky at the end of it they fight each other in the finale Brian he's the man like they're um I've always been a huge fan of Henry Gracie and Brian's jiu-jitsu is like I think one of the most um applicable he, he's done the best job of applying the jiu-jitsu for MMA right so like a lot of guys have good MMA or good jiu-jitsu but it doesn't apply to MMA He's got the most submissions, the most, yeah. So that's one guy that I've always been a huge fan of. I've, I learned my front headlock whole series from them. Uh, yeah, and so that's how I ended up getting signed by the UFC. Everything I do, I want to be the best I can be. Um, I, know, I know how my skills um, stack up against, you know, the top guys. I know how my, my skills stack up against Adesanya. That's, that's my goal. You know, I want to be a world champion. I want to bring uh, a world title back to Delaware County. My most recent fight was at MSG. Uh, that was on the Izzy Pereira card. Uh, Madison Square Garden, I fought Wellington Thurman. And uh, I, f I won a decision and went all three rounds. But incredible experience, 20,000 fans, um, close to home, you know. So I had, you know, all my family and friends were able to go to the fight, which was a, a, an amazing experience. I, did, I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to do that again. I try to be, first and foremost, I try to be a good role model, right? My morals are, you know, honesty, be hardworking, be courageous. Um, and I, I think that I do a good job of that. I think that, um, and by me, look, I looked up to, I had role models growing up and, and I would watch everything they did and, and try to emulate them. And I think that it's my duty to try to be a good role model in the community. Awesome. Yeah, like, like I said, this is the sport that I'm in. My career is sports entertainment, right? So without the fans and the sponsors and the people that's supporting you, like it really doesn't matter. Like if I go in the woods and I beat up Jeremy and no one sees it, it doesn't mean anything, right? So we got to have the fans. We got to have the support of people there's got to be um interest there's got to be interest in the sport it's sports entertainment so uh tune in you know when 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 not just me but you know all my teammates when my teammates are competing when they're fighting uh you know tune in support them uh when i was coming up and i had no money and uh you know i didn't it wasn't beneficial for me to work a 40 hour work you know, job, like I wanted to spend as much time in the gym as possible. The sponsors are what really what uh, made it possible for me to stay in the gym and not be at the job. So, so like, especially with my daughter, my daughter, uh, my daughter's three years old. And I think that nowadays, especially in the world of technology and every single kid, it makes me sick. I see every kid just stuck in their tablet or on the TV or with their mom's phones. Like, you know, I really love I mean, appreciate having these clean parks and the beautiful trees. Shout out to Executive Tree Care that my, me and my daughter can go to these parks and spend time and be more like, you know, in the way a kid should grow up. Uh, being outdoors and, and um, 
playing and being active. Executive Tree Care as a as a company, they take care of all of the parks in Delaware County, which um, you know is is especially important nowadays, being that uh, there's less parks, there's less trees these days. So I think it's our duty to uh, preserve the environment and especially our our own community. Working with Executive Tree Care has been extremely beneficial for me at my at my daughter's house. Uh, there was a tree, a dead tree that had dead branches, and it became a safety hazard for my daughter. Um, you know, obviously, if a tr if a branch falls on my daughter, that's not going to be good. As tough as she is, she might not be able to handle that. So, Executive Tree Care was able to come out and um, and remove the dangerous tree from hurting my daughter. Sponsors like Executive Tree Care have given me the opportunity to train full time rather than having to wake up and go to work and miss practice.